This morning's message text comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. This is the Word of God. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. And then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus said, You believe Because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, you shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May I add a blessing to all that have ears to hear. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in worship and to praise. Lord God, help us to to move beyond the the say what and into that personal relationship with you. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to tell our story so others may know you as Savior. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. This morning's message text comes uh, in a series uh, or uh, a series of sequences or um, uh, occurrences, if you, if you will. John, uh, in his gospel, uh, begins the prologue uh, by telling us about Jesus and kind of setting the tone for the, the whole gospel. John witnesses, John the Baptist witnesses to Christ. And after that prologue and after that John begins to to tell us uh, about Christ and determining and telling us the names of Christ, there's a series of next day occurrences. And and the reading today is the the third in that uh, sequence. John begins the story by passing along what he knows about Jesus. And then there becomes uh, an invitation and a promise given back to the reader from Jesus. And then we see this invitation and, and storytelling of Philip to Nathaniel. John says, look, look, there he goes. The one that we've been told about all along. I baptize with water, but Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And his disciples, those that are following him, turn and they follow Jesus. John took what he knew of Jesus. He knew the names of Jesus. He knew that that Jesus would be the one that would come to to save us, the the salvation of the world. He knew that that Jesus was the king of Israel. John knew that Jesus was something more than just special. 
He knew that he was the fulfillment of prophecy. And so the day that, that Jesus walked by and John saw him, he, he reached out and said, Look! And with excitement, he says, There's the Messiah. There's the one that you want to follow. There's the one you want to listen to. And he tells his part of the story. The disciples hear that. And they have two choices, don't they? They can choose to follow Jesus, or they can choose not to follow Jesus. And they're given that opportunity because John has given it to them. John has done his job by telling them, this is Jesus. John can't take them there. John can't make them follow Jesus. They make that choice, that decision to follow Jesus. We're all given that, that choice. Once we hear this story, whether it's been told to us by a, a pastor, maybe it was told to us by a friend, maybe it was, that story was told to us by our parents. The story I remember being told was from my grandmother. And she shared that story, so then I heard and I had that choice to follow or not to follow. Jesus never says to us, you must do this. Jesus, when asked the question, where are you staying? Jesus simply says, come and see. Jesus doesn't give a, a, a two-page theological uh, debate about what his, what his thoughts and feelings are. What he just simply says, if you're interested and you want to find out, come and see. Simply come and see. And those two disciples, the ones who were followers of John, decide that, yes, they need to seek out more. They need and want more. Because somewhere in their hearts they knew that Jesus was the one. Chris Tomlin tells us about a similar kind of response. The song is called, I Will Follow, and it's by Chris Tomlin. putting enough energy in this song? I don't see a lot of smiles out there, and I'm really trying here, folks. I have a story to tell, and I want you to hear it. And I want you to become excited because I'm excited. And I'm not excited about playing the guitar because I'm not that great of a guitar player. 
And I'm not excited about singing because I'm not that great of a singer. What am I, what am I excited about? Jesus Christ, I've got a story to tell. And I'm following along the best I can. But you know, sometimes it's really hard <laughs> to be energetic up here and ready because and, all I see is like a lot of blank faces a lot of times. <laughs> I'm not even sure if you're here. I know you are. But I have a story to tell and I want you to, to follow along. Even though you don't know the song, tap your foot, clap your hands, at least acknowledge that you hear me. <laughs> okay? All right. Uh, where are we going to start here? Where you go, I'll go. Here we go. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move, I'll follow. That was a bad place to start. I'm going to go back, uh, Dave, to uh, all your ways are good. It's like the first verse. It's probably like the third, third screen, maybe third or fourth screen in that series. There you go. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight. High above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move, I'll follow. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I'll follow you. Yeah. I will follow you. I will live for you alone You're the one I seek Knowing I will find All I need in you alone Where you go, I'll go Where you stay, I'll stay Where you move, I'll move, I'll follow Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve In this life, I move, I'll follow you When you move, I'll move, I'll follow Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve If this life, I'll lose, I'll follow you yeah. I will follow you, yeah Where you go, I'll go Where you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move, I'll follow who you love, I love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I'll follow you. Yeah. I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Give it up for God, absolutely. Give it up for God. A little cold in here, there's nothing better than putting the hands together to warm us up. I did that on purpose this morning, folks. Because it's midwinter. And sometimes we get the doldrums. You know, we get this post-Christmas and New Year's. Ugh. Sometimes our faith is like that too. Sometimes we lose that excitement and we come and we go through the routine. We go, we sit here in church because, I don't know, I crawled out of bed this morning and wanted to crawl back in. I don't know about you. House was a little chilly. It's like, but then I remembered why I was coming. I was coming to tell a story. I had a story to tell you folks today, and I had some excitement for you to get, to capture this morning. And so I got out of bed and came. 
we can lose that excitement from time to time. Congregations can lose that excitement from time to time. And we kind of get going through the routine and, and, and we lose that excitement. But it's personal. Do you think if John said, hey guys, there goes, uh, there goes Jesus. Um, he's uh, you know, the king of Israel. He's the Messiah. Do you think anybody that was following him would have went anywhere else? No. It was his excitement that got others excited about what was happening. And it was because he was willing to tell that story, his part of the story, that the disciples reacted and responded. Because John set the stage. And it, just, it doesn't stop there, though. His story. Because the next day, John, Jesus is leaving, and, and he finds Philip. Now, what Scripture doesn't tell us about much is that Philip must have somewhere sought out Christ and knew a little bit about him before this day. Because Jesus is, is out on the road and he's moving. And he comes to Philip. And what does Jesus, what does Jesus say to him? Come. Follow me. Again, he doesn't give this, this theological ideation. He doesn't, he doesn't recite the, the Torah to, to Philip. He just says, Come. And follow me. And because Philip was thirsty and hungry for more of what he knew that Jesus was offering, he followed. But the story doesn't end there either. Because Philip had this excitement about he'd found the ones that the prophets were talking about that were written in the law. He was the one that was coming, and he got excited, and what did he do? He's got a buddy that he wants to go along with. And so he goes and says, Hey, Nathaniel! You think he went, Hey, hey, Nathaniel, I found somebody. No, he was excited! Nathaniel, this is the guy that they've been talking about, this we've been waiting for, I could just... But Nathaniel, good old Nathaniel, he was probably a little more, you know, laid back. I can see him. And he says, yeah, right. Nathaniel's skeptical. Because part of what Philip had told him that <laughs> this guy was from Nazareth. He was a son of a carpenter. Yep, and Nathaniel said, Nathaniel said uh -huh. sure, what, what, could, <laughs> what good can come <clears throat> from Nazareth? But even in that doubt, even in that skepticism, Philip goes, what does Philip say? <clears throat> what does Philip say? Come and see. He doesn't say, look. Da, 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 da. I said, come and see. Make up your own mind because I know when you get there, you're going to know too. But he simply says, come. Come and see. So Nathaniel goes off with Philip and, and they're, they're approaching Jesus and, and Jesus says, hey, Nathaniel, how you doing? Jesus says, this guy is a true Israelite. There's, there's nothing false in this guy. And he's going to see through anything that, if I'm false, he's going to see through anything. So Jesus says, hey, how you doing? Now imagine Nathaniel's surprise when he uh, heard that from Jesus. Like, Dude, I just, won't, I just come out from underneath my fig tree over here and, G and he knows my name already. 
he doubts just a little bit. He says, how do you know my name? How do you know my name? And in that moment, it becomes very personal for Nathaniel. And Nathaniel, in that moment, when it became personal, when he, when he decided for himself, when, when he looked at Jesus and could see in those eyes and could see in that heart that there is love there. There's, there, there's more than anything that he'd ever experienced before. He says, you are the one. You are the Messiah. You are the King of Israel. Because it became personal. All those places along the way, I could, I could see, uh, I could see John's disciples going, when he talked about Jesus and pointed out and excited, they go, say what? Or when Philip is called to, to follow me, he'll say, say what? And when Philip goes to Nathaniel, Nathaniel goes, say What? We have to move past that stage of say what? And truly hear the voice of God in our lives. And when we do that, we get the excitement that we need to tell the story. I think sometimes we get comfortable in our pews, guys. I think we get comfortable where we're at we get comfortable coming and we get comfortable going, and, but we forget about the story. Each one of us has a story. Each one of us has been given a story. And each one of us needs to tell that story. Because the world out there really needs Jesus. Can I get an amen about that? How about a little louder? The world really needs Jesus. And who's going to tell them? We are. If we don't tell them, who's going to tell them? No one. No one. So I know it's midwinter. I know it's hard to get excited. But God needs us to be excited about Jesus. And we, God needs us to tell our story. There was an 86-year-old nun that got caught in an elevator for four days and three nights. Nope, sorry, backwards. Four days and three. Four nights and three days. There you go. Fortunately, she had taken a, a bottle of water and some celery sticks and, and uh, some cough drops with her into, the, into the, the, uh, the elevator when she's ready. She tried to, to push the doors open, but the electricity had went off, so, so there she was. And she had a choice. She could panic or make it her own personal prayer shelter. She made it her own personal prayer shelter. And CNN uh, interviewed her after she got out, and, and she said, really, truly, I felt God, I felt Jesus as my strength while I was there. Now, I don't know that any one of us here would, would say that being stuck in an elevator would be a gift. <laughs> but it was. She felt it was a gift because it, it took her out of her comfort zone into a different place where she could experience Christ in a different way. And so, maybe that's what we all need. Maybe we all need our own elevator experience so that we can move to a new place in our relationship. Get out of that comfort zone. Get excited about what's going on so we can tell others. I have a song that I'm going to finish up with today. And I know that probably, uh, I was in the last service, I thought everybody would know it. But, but Kelsey says, I don't know that song. So maybe you won't know it. But anybody that's been around the church for any length of time will know it because it says, I love to tell the story. It's one of my favorites. I've sung it for years. But it, the words are very, very true. 
And so, this morning, don't just sing the words. If you know the, if you know the tune, if you know the melody, absolutely wonderful. But just don't sing the words like it's rote. I want you to think about the words. Because that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to think about telling our story. Why we tell our story. Who we're going to tell our story to. And this song talks about all that. I love to tell the story. So the invitation is person. Come and see. I know that each one of us here have family members that we're concerned about their salvation, don't we? We have friends that don't know Christ Jesus. What I ask you to do this week is to think about the words of that song. And tell a story. Begin by praying for them. Pray for that person intentionally. That the Spirit would come amongst them and, and stir their hearts so that they will respond to come and see. Maybe it's someone that you can, can come along with and encourage. Maybe they need that word. And if we're faithful, God will give us the opportunity 
to give the invitation. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to quote, you know, quote scripture. It's come and see. Come with me. I want you to be on fire for God. When we're on fire, that's ex when we get that excitement, then we just kind of shout it from the rooftops, right? Because God is so good all the time. I didn't lead into that well, did I? God is good all the time. I think we got it. Amen.